here today. It looks like we've had to quarantine, even though we'll hopefully have COVID test results back by then. But today is the first Sunday of Advent. And while I'm not with you physically, I want you to know I'm with you in spirit today. And I'm praying for you and I'm going with you online. <clears throat> I do want to share with you on this first Sunday of Advent a passage of scripture from the prophet Isaiah. And this comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. In it he writes, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I know this has been a rough year for all of us, and many things have come to pass. We have been through depressions and anxiety, viruses and deaths and births, and what a year it has been. But we still have that promise, even as they did back in the day of Isaiah, that God is with us, that he has a plan, that he has a promise for us. And so today, we light our first Advent candle, remembering that Christ has come. God's promises are fulfilled. We can hold on to that, and we can stand firm upon the rock that is the word of our God. I love you all. Happy Advent, and I will see you soon.
got 15 more minutes than what I was expecting. So I am starting out pretty good here. And I hope you don't mind too if I come down here where y'all are at. And I just uh, have a hard time teaching from a pulpit. It's just uh, hard to connect when you're that far away. So I'm going to come on down here where you guys are at. And I got a couple props here. We're just going to. I'm not. Uh, I don't claim to be a preacher, but I love teaching. And so that's what I'm going to do this morning here is to teach. But before I do, I just want to uh, just say I hope y'all that we all had a. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, and as Pastor said in the video there, that this has been a pretty crazy year, hasn't it? It's been, it's been crazy, it's been, uh, for some of us, it's been pretty hard, taking some hard blows, but the thing of it is, that the thing that I can praise the Lord for the most is that uh, we know, we know that, uh, that, you know, even though it's crazy and all this is going on, that we know who wins, don't we? We know the final score, we know the Lord wins. We don't know exactly how the game's going to play out until that final, when the final whistle blows, but when it does, we know that the Lord wins, and I'm so thankful for that, and um, I, I have so much I want to share here this morning with you, and so I'm going to move fast, and another thing I want to point out too is I'm going to be using a, a, a Schofield Bible, not because I believe this is the, you know, the only translation that we, that we should be using, but this thing has been with me for so long. I, I, I had notes in here when I was looking again, uh, getting, getting ready for this morning, and there was, I see notes that I had here from back when I was in Bible college in 80, 81 through 83 or 4 or something like that. It's been with me the after for all these years, and I just love teaching out of this, this uh, my Bible here. It's so comfortable to me. But if y'all are sitting there, if you have NIVs, NASBs, or New King James, you're going to be able to follow uh, follow me along here. I just wanted to point that out so it's not a little bit confusing, confusing when I start teaching. Uh, but uh, last week, you remember where Pastor Josh was at? Anybody? We'll check. We're, I know, you know, we're going through Romans. You remember where Pastor Josh wound up last week? Chapter 7. Okay, I'll help you out there a little bit. Pastor Josh ended up at chapter 7, Romans chapter 7. And as he taught through uh, Romans chapter 7, remember the, uh, when Paul was uh, just laying his heart open to us about the struggles that he has in living the Christian life, trying to consistently live the Christian life. Remember he was, uh, there was there's statements in there where Paul was saying that the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. The things that I do want to do, those are the things that I don't do. Remember this he, he was like, uh, just there's a struggle that was going on in his heart. And as, and as Paul was, was, uh, was bearing these things, I was sitting back here and I'm thinking, man, this is encouraging to me. Because here's Paul, probably the most used man of God in all the, on all the New Testament. He was, uh, Paul, uh, the Lord used Paul to pen the majority of the New Testament. Paul was the one who went out and was on his missionary journeys with other, with other brothers and, and, pretty much reached the whole known world at that time with the gospel, the spread church, spread Christianity and all these churches that were established through Paul, and yet he still struggled, didn't he? Still struggled with a consistent, uh, with a consistent Christian life. And I'm sitting there thinking, Paul, that's me, buddy. That's me. Now, there's there are things in my life even now that I, I don't want to do, and I do, and there's things in my life that I do want to do in serving the Lord that I just don't do. And it, it can get... It can be, it's like sometimes you, you find yourself on a spiritual roller coaster, isn't it? Anybody here, if I, anybody you can uh, kind of uh, see where I'm at with this thing, right? Debbie, are you still working? Okay, tomorrow morning, there's Debbie. She's going to work, and she's on the spiritual high. Last Friday, her boss gave her a promotion, gave her a raise that goes with it, and she's going to work tomorrow morning. Man, she is on that top of that spiritual mount. She's excited. She's pumped to get to work. Praise the Lord. And I just uh, can't wait to get to work. And boom. Engine, the, uh, the transmission blows in her car. And she comes off the side of her car. Oh, save my car. Lord, don't you understand? I don't have money to fix this car right now. And she goes from the spiritual top on her roller coaster right down into the valley, right? But she has the radio on. And there's an announcer saying the next... Anybody from the next five minutes who calls Joe's Transmission Repair Shop will have a free transmission repair. 
back to the top. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, look at this. Thank you, Lord. You know, you got this all figured out already to fix my transmission. And she's all excited. And she pulls her phone out of her out of her cup holder in her car and goes to call Joe's transmission shop. Battery's dead. Oh, Lord, you did remind me last night to charge my battery up. And we get on this roller coaster, don't we, sometimes? A spiritual roller coaster, up and down and around. And man, it can be so frustrating at times, isn't it? Paul mentions that. It can be so frustrating and exhausting to be on the spiritual roller coaster. Let me ask you, do you think that's the way God intended for us to live our Christian lives? Not in the least. I, I don't think that God intended us to, to be frustrated, to be exhausted here on, this, on our time here on this earth. And when it's all said and done, we, you know, we die and we come crawling up on our hands and knees to, to the, uh, up to the uh, pearly gates. And, oh, man, I made it. Finally, I made it. I don't think that's how that's how the Lord is. Uh, you know, the Lord intended for us to to uh, to live our, our time here on this earth. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, Paul uh, he, he does he he's, he, he uh, at the end of chapter seven he says here uh, in verse twenty four, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death, this spiritual roller coaster up and down? How can I get off this thing? I'm glad you guys asked that question because we see the answer to that here in Romans chapter eight. And uh, I'm not going to teach on Romans 8 this morning, because after, after the service last week, uh, Josh and I were back here, and we're talking about, we're, we're getting excited, knowing that Romans chapter 8 is coming up here. Because that is the answer to the spiritual roller coaster that, we, that we're on. How do we get off this thing? Romans 8 is, is the answer to that. And so we're getting excited about, uh, about chapter 8, and that's when uh, Pastor Josh suggested to me, he says, I got you on call for next week, Mike. But it seems as though you got something here you want to share. So why don't you just take, you know, just plan on being here this morning and, and uh, teaching on on the, the uh, walking in the Spirit. I don't know if you caught that as the, the title of what I want to share this morning, but simply walking in the Spirit. And uh, so, but in Romans chapter 8, Paul here has a, uh, it's just an amazingly rich and insightful lesson on, uh, on the, the absolute necessity of the Holy Spirit's work in our lives on a day by day, moment by moment basis. It's just it's just vital if we're going to get off this roller coaster. It is just vital that we just allow the Holy Spirit to work his life through us. That's what Romans chapter 8 is all about. And actually, too, it's where he gets from in, in the, the end of chapter 7 here, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death, to where he comes to uh, the end of uh, chapter 8, he says, uh, he, he lists all these obstacles that we come up against that can keep us all on this roller coaster up and down. And he comes and he makes this statement here in verse 37. Nay, in all these things, though, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. How did Paul get from this, uh, this, this wretched man that I am attitude to the end of chapter 8 there where he says we are more than conquerors through him who loved us? Let's take a look and see what, let's see how he did that. You know what? Let's pray. I forgot to pray before I get started. Lord, you know that um, I'm excited about uh, this time to be able to share the things that you've been teaching me over so many years about my total, my need for total dependence on you. And as I depend on myself, I find myself on the spiritual roller coaster. And Father, I just ask as we look at your look at your word this morning that. You would encourage us, you would excite, excite us about the possibility of what Paul is teaching here about the, 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 um, the, the cure for that or the answer to that situation. I ask Father that our hearts would be open for what you have this morning. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, I'm not going to teach on, I'm not going to, cheat, I'm not going to take Josh's thunder here in uh, chapter 8. I'm going to let him teach through that here through the next week or two or three, however long it takes him. But I'm going to teach the same principles of what it means to be walking in the Spirit, being Spirit-filled, being Spirit-led, uh, and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. I'm going, to, I'm going to go over, I'm going to use the Ephesians as my, as my point, as my springboard for teaching on these things. And let Romans chapter 8 for, for Josh to teach on. Um, and I, like I say, I got a lot here. And I can talk fast. If you all can listen fast, we're going to go through this. And hopefully we'll all end at the same time here. So here we go. If you would, go over to Ephesians chapter 
chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 is where we're going to start. Um, I don't normally do this either, but I just I just have this one crack at you here. So I'm gonna I'm going to uh, just start right in the middle here with Ephesians chapter 4. And because uh, I'm the same way as Josh, I love teaching verse by verse all the way through, but we just don't have time to do that this morning. So we're going to start out in Ephesians chapter 4, talking about what it means when we see these when we see these verses, uh, walking in the Spirit, led by the Spirit, and uh, there's other things like that that Paul shares. It's all through his writings, all through there about the need and the uh, absolute necessity of the Spirit of God in our lives. Uh, Ephesians. It is uh, six chapters. Now we know that when Paul wrote this letter to the to the uh, church at Ephesus, he didn't sit down and he didn't have chapters and verses break, verse breaks. But we uh, we can use those in helping us to kind of get a handle on on, uh, on Ephesians. The first three chapters of Ephesians is what we call our position in Christ. This is what, as blood bought, born again believers in Christ, Paul takes a Paul uh, takes three chapters. And lays out what our position in Christ is, and then the next three chapters is what that is what is uh, is, is what uh, that 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 should affect our lives in, in every aspect of our lives. So in first uh, first three chapters of Ephesians, this is a, a dynamite portion of Scripture, just an absolute dynamite portion of Scripture. As Paul lays out what we look like in God's eyes, our position that we have. In Jesus Christ and I just went through here uh, a couple days ago and just quickly went through and I listed all the, the, the things that I saw that jumped out at me as our descript as a description of how God sees us what our position is in Christ and I'm just going to read them quickly and those there's no way I can stop on any of these or I'll never have enough time to get halfway where we want to be here but this listen just listen to what we're going to, what, if you go home this afternoon and you read Ephesians 1 through 3, you're going to find this description of us in there. We are saints. We are called the faithful. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings. We have been chosen to be holy and without blame. We have been predestinated unto the adoption of sons of Almighty God. We are to the praise and glory of His grace. We are made acceptable to Him, the Beloved. We are redeemed through his blood. We are forgiven of sins. We are the objects of God's grace and kindness. We, are, we have an obtained an inheritance in heaven. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We have been given the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We have been spiritually enlightened. We have been made alive spiritually. We are loved by God's great love. We have been raised up to sit in heavenly places. We are saved by grace through faith. We are God's workmanship unto good works. We are made near by the blood of Christ. We are no longer God's enemies, but are at peace with God. We have direct access to God the Father. We are citizens of the household of God. We have boldness and confidence in the presence of Almighty God Himself. We are filled with all fullness and with all the fullness of God. Man, if that doesn't get you get your blood going a little bit, man, your your powder is your powder is wet. This is what this is how God sees us, and even. Uh, even Paul here, when he's when he's writing these, this letter, he gets to the uh, to the to the end of the section here that I just that I just read through, uh, just uh, briefly uh, flew through here. And when he comes to the end of this section, he says here in chapter three, verses twenty through twenty-four, and he says, "Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end." Amen. Praise hallelujah. You didn't know that Paul had a little bit of Pentecostal in him, did you? But he wowed himself. He just wowed himself when he, he sat down and the Holy Spirit was revealing to him what he was in Christ. Now, I know Don's sitting there thinking, boy, I, I love that description of how God sees me. I love that. But man, I know. I know what I, look, what I look like. And we all do too, don't we? We all know that Okay, this is what God is saying that we look like. But we all know this is this is what we're we, we know we're like this, huh? don't we? It's just a stone. Insignificant. Uh, if I were to take this and put it in the yard and say, how much do you think I'd get for it? This stone. Not, not much, is it? If anything, right? It's dirty too. I picked it up, it was had frost all over it. Now it's uh, 
It's thawed off and dirty as we'll get out, but I'll put it in there. But anyway, that's so what's what's going on here? If God says that this, we gotta keep that page out here. If God says this is what we look like, but we all know that this is what we look like, right? So what's what's what jives here? What's how do uh, what's what's going on here? Well, if we read these verses. I want, you to, I want you to catch a phrase that comes up over and over. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according to his chosen us in him. And uh, that we are accepted. There in verse 6. We are accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood. So, we are, this is our description of us. In who? In Christ. Yes, exactly. Who is perfect? Who is blameless? Who is sinless? Who is accepted? Jesus Christ is, isn't he? And it says there that we are, we have been placed in Christ. Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So that when God sees us now, who does he see? He sees Christ. The blood of Christ, doesn't he? And then that, that is... Uh, that is how we can be described as this right now. It's because we are in Christ. I just wanted to set that stage because now we're going to go into chapter 4 here. Where he says, I therefore, chapter 4 verse 1, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation to which you are called. With all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity in the, in the endeavoring to keep the unity in the spirit of the spirit in the bond of peace. I therefore beseech you that you walk worthy of this vocation. Pastor Josh was here. What would he stop? What, what would he ask at this point? You see the word wherefore or therefore? What do you do? You stop and you back up and you see what it's there for. Exactly. Exactly. So what are we? What is he pointing our attention back to? He's pointing our attention back to all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And he says, based on this, he says, I'm going to beseech you to do something that you would be able to walk worthy of this calling. That's uh, the word vocation that I used in my, uh, in my translations. It basically says your calling. I want to, Paul is begging us that we would walk worthy now of this, of our position in Christ. He's not telling us to be worthy of this. That's not going to happen, is it? We're never going to be worthy of this. But he's asking us that we would walk, we would live lives worthy of this. And he's going to tell us how to do it. And Wayne says, okay, man, this sounds great. Paul, I, 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 I really want to walk worthy of this position that God's given me. How am I going to do that, Paul? Paul says, I'm glad you asked that question because I'm going to show you right here. Because there's no break in this verses here where it says, I, I, I beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation to which you are called. And he says, how, did, how are we going to do this? With all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the, and the bond of peace. Wayne says, man, that's easy. I thought you were going to ask me to be a pastor or a missionary or, or who knows what, you know, something great like this on a grand scale. If all I need to do to live my life in... Uh, uh, worthy of the vocation to which you called me is to live a life that is uh, a, a, that is characterized with lowliness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, love. Wayne says, "Oh, I can do that, man. I got this." He read that this morning, and so he he says, "Oh, man, I, that's all I got to do." So he memorizes that list: lowliness, meekness, and I can't remember them either. Uh, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, love. But Wayne memorizes uh, that list. Gets ready to go to church. And of all things, I mean, it's going good. Uh, Cindy's ready to go. They're in the car. They're out the door at the right at the before. You know, they're not late this morning. Coming down the street, and somebody pulls out in front of it. And man, he's got the window down. He's out there. Yeah, you idiot! What's the matter? Don't you have a drive? This? And, oh, I need to make it to church this morning. And I blew this. Right? Here's that spiritual roller coaster going on. Okay. So, but let me ask you something. Lowliness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Wayne knows he can't do that, and, it, and, and it's not. It's actually, he's absolutely right. We can't live this um, in our own in our own self. 
If we, it's just, it's, uh, if we, we try, we try, we get frustrated, we, you know, we're on this roller coaster. But let me, what, what, where, do we recognize this list from somewhere else? Lowliness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love? Yes, exactly right, Cindy. This is a short list of the fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? Back over in, uh, right, just a few pages back there in, in Galatians. Uh, Paul says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. And so when Wayne comes to the conclusion, oh, Lord, I can't do this. I can't do this. He's absolutely right. He doesn't expect us to do this. Because whose, whose fruit is this? It's the Holy Spirit's fruit. It's not Wayne's fruit. What's Wayne's fruit going to be? What's, what's all that he, the only thing that Wayne is able to produce? His old nature. That old man that's hanging out the window and screaming at the neighbors who pulled out in front of him. That's what Wayne's going to, that's the only fruit that Wayne can produce. But it's the Holy Spirit who wants to produce his fruit through our lives if we'll let him. Does that make sense to you all? That's the only way it's going to happen is if we are just living spirit-filled, spirit-led lives. Where it's, um, um, it's, uh, it's just, it's easy. I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's it's simple. It's simple to uh, to well, just follow uh, what the Lord is telling us that we need to do that to to live a life worthy of this position, a life that is characterized by His fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, oh, I got so far ahead of myself and got myself caught up in my in my notes again here. Yeah. So all that God asks us, all that God is asking us in return for all that he's done for us, that description there in the first three chapters, all that God is asking us of us in return for that is that we would simply let him live his life through us as we simply yield ourselves to the person of the Holy Spirit and walk in the Spirit. Everything else will follow from there. If we are all walking in the Spirit, if we're all letting the Lord live His life through us in the person of the Holy Spirit, there will be pastors, there will be missionaries, there will be moms who, who raise uh, sons that, are, that, uh, that love the Lord. There will be uh, farmers that love the Lord and are doing the Lord's work. There, there's, those things will follow. But the thing is, the very elementary, most important part of the victorious Christian life is simply healing ourselves to the Holy Spirit and letting him live his life through us. Okay, Mike, you convince me. If I'm going to uh, get off the spiritual roller coaster and I'm, going to, and, and I'm going to live life victoriously, I need to have the Holy Spirit live his life through me. I, okay, you know, I, I, write, I agree with you, Mike, that this is, this is how I need to live my, live my life, is the Holy Spirit living his life through me. Now, but Mike, how does that happen? Good question, isn't it? How do we allow, how do we have the Holy Spirit live his life through us? Well, we all know that at the moment of salvation, we are in dwelt with the Holy Spirit of promise, aren't we? we? We saw in that list that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise at the moment of salvation. We are indwelt by him. But there's also another aspect of the Holy Spirit. And we just, we need to, as we live our Christian lives, we need to uh, grow in, uh, in, uh, in this, uh, the Holy Spirit and, uh, and having him produce his, his fruit in us. Uh, so, let's go, I saved one verse, okay? We see verses that talk about, did I miss something here? Anyway, we see verses in the Bible and in, uh, in Paul's writings that talk about being led by the Spirit. We see verses that talk about being, uh, 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 yeah, walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. And there's one here verse. There's one verse that I I believe answers the question of how is what does this look like in our lives if we're if we're if we're going to be led and we're going to be walking in the Spirit. Over, come with me, if you would, over to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. One verse here that man just makes it crystal clear to me how this happens. 
uh, uh, Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not be drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Remember, there's the walking in the Spirit, there's uh, living in the Spirit, just being led by the Spirit. And this verse here says that we are to be filled with the Spirit. Um, it says, and don't be drunk with wine in which is excess, but in that same sense, be filled with the Spirit. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll beat on Wayne again. Here he's got strong shoulders here. Um, I don't know if you guys know that Wayne is a huge Giants fan. Okay. And let's say last night uh, his Giants uh, beat the, the Bills or whatever. So Wayne gets on the phone and he calls up his other fellow Giant fans here in, uh, here in the Valley. And uh, they're going to, they all run down and they meet down at Alligators. And they're going to celebrate the Giants' victory. And they get, plas they get just get plastered down there last night. They're just having a great time, you know, and they get plastered. Yeah. You guys, you, guys, you didn't know that, did you, Cindy? Yeah. <laughs> now, let's say that Wayne just left Alligators here just a couple, maybe half an hour ago. He comes through the back, the back doors here into the auditorium, and he is plastered. How do we know that? What are the outward, the, the outward uh, manifestations that he's plastered? The way he turns around, voice. Yes, the way he talks. The way he talks is he's he, okay. So let's let's go back here with Lou, right? Yeah, the way he talks. <laughs> the fruit of the fruit of the vine, is that? Yeah. Yeah, well, we know that Wayne, when he comes through these back doors, we know that he's plastered because of the way, like Lou, Lou says, by the way he talks. Normally, Wayne's very low-key, very gracious. When he comes in here plastered, he's just bombastic, he's wild, he's obnoxious, right? Because it's the alcohol that is consu has, has consumed him and is, 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 is intoxicated him. What was the one you said, Cindy? Uh, He's stunned. Yeah, the way he walks, the way he physically walks is evident in that he is intoxicated by the, by the alcohol. He's stumbling and kind of catching himself. Hopefully he catches himself before he falls flat on the floor. Okay, the way he talks, the way he walks is influenced by the alcohol. Anything else? He doesn't remember very well. Okay, yeah, he can't remember very well. His mind is consumed with the alcohol. And then, that, and, then, and, then, and also that goes along with that is his personality is controlled by that alcohol, isn't it? He's normally very, he makes good decisions and he's, he's very uh, gracious, but under the influence of that alcohol, he gets rude, he gets obnoxious because it's the alcohol that's controlling his personality. Anything else? I think he said about his decision making. So when he comes to the church, he's, he's taking, he's driving like an idiot, he's taking risks, you know, passing people coming here. That's not normally Wayne, but it's the alcohol that's caused, that's, that's, that's uh, has control of him and causing him to do those things, right? Uh, his, his actions, his reactions, every aspect of Wayne is controlled by the alcohol, isn't it? And what Paul says here in this verse, he says, don't be drunk on wine, in which is excess, but in that same idea, in that same, uh, that same vein of thinking, be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. What do you think he's saying there? No. Don't be drunk on wine, which controls every aspect of your personality, your being. But in that same way, be controlled with the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. In other words, be, if I can say this, intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, just to allow him to live his life through us. Now, how did Wayne get into that situation to begin with? How did he get into that situation of being drunk? Yeah. Whose decision was that? To go, and th and get, go down to Alligators and get that first drink? That was Wayne's decision, wasn't it? Yeah, he yielded to that. Now, I, I live just a stone's throw from Alligators. I can see it right out my window. Do I get drunk on wine just being that close to it? No, because I don't let, I don't make, I don't yield myself to that, to that, uh, uh, the, the, the alcohol that's in Alligators. And that's the way that Wayne has allowed himself to be intoxicated with alcohol 
is because he made that decision. He yielded himself to the, to the Holy Spirit, and that's how he found himself in that uh, in that uh, in that in, in the situation that he's in there. Uh, and it's it's such a simple concept. If if we have ourselves so full of our desires, the things that we want to do, and we're, we're, we're full of it, and, like, and Don is, is full of Don, there's no room left in there for the Holy Spirit, is there, to have his life that, 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 that exemplified through her. It's what, what, are, what, what, is she gonna, what are we going to see in Dawn's life if she's, if she's full of Dawn? We're going to see Dawn, aren't we? We're going to see that sin nature. Let me go back to this thing here. Yeah, we got Talking about being filled with the Spirit, being under the Holy Spirit's control, every aspect of our lives is 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 uh, is uh, in control of the Holy Spirit because we we yield ourselves to Him. Let's say with that we're, we're doing uh, that. This is this is Dawn, okay, and she is full to the top of self of Dawn. Sin nature is ruling in her life. Uh, she's just. Living life on her own, on, on her own, and uh, the way she wants to, and she's full of self. Now Don goes to work, and she gets jostled. Okay, somebody posts a text about her, or somebody takes a jab at her and jostles her. What's going to slosh out? Don, isn't it? Revenge, anger, meanness. That's what's going to slosh out of there, isn't it? But if Dawn is filled with the Holy Spirit, right to the top, and someone jostles her, what sloshes out? Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, not revenge, not, not meanness. You see how easy this is? <laughs> Just using simple illustrations like this. It's such, it's such a vital part of our successful, victorious Christian life. And we'll just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit allow him to do what he wants to do in our in our lives and how do we do this in, in another practical way how do we do this simply by we need to feed the spirit over in galatians oh i forgot this verse that's the one i was trying to think of over in galatians chapter 6 verse 16 paul again here's writing about the holy spirit's work in our life another one of his uh, area in his letters here he says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh Want to get off that roller coaster? Walk in the Spirit. We won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And as we as we feed the Spirit, as we spend time in the Word, as we spend time in communion with the Lord, the Spirit begins to get stronger and stronger. It takes over more and more control of us. And the flesh then has less and less control of us. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just, if you don't believe me, try it. Okay? Try it. Just feed the Spirit and, uh, and I think it was Cindy was talking about, or somebody else talking about how they give up watching the news lately. And that's great, because man, garbage in, garbage out. If we're, if we're getting all revved up and excited about the, you know, the elections and the COVID and all that's going on, that's just going to start shoving the Holy Spirit out of our life. And it's gonna give the, it's gonna give the flesh a foothold in our lives. Uh, there's a story that, uh, of a, uh, a missionary Back and way back when he was a missionary to the Indians, the natives, uh, Indians here in the U.S. And uh, there was a this uh, Indian who who uh, accepted Christ as his savior. And the missionary come back and he's talking with him, with this with this man. And he's asking, "How you doing?" And he says, "Man, he says I'm struggling. He says I I I, I want to the same thing that Paul says. All these things that I want to do that I can't do, and things that I don't want to do that I do." He says, it's like a, two dogs in me that are fighting, a white dog and a black dog. And the missionary asks him, he says, well, which dog wins? He says, the one I feed. Now, isn't, that a, isn't that the truth? This, isn't it? The dog that we feed is the one who gets strength and, and, dom and dominates. If we're going to feed the white dog, the Holy Spirit is going to dominate in our lives. Uh, so, Paul says, oh, let's go back here to, uh, and this is where I'm going to run out of time. Do I need to quit, like, for just in time to get everybody in Sunday school, right, basically? Okay. Good. I got a chance to move through this a little ways here. Let's, uh, let's go back here to what we, we talked about here in Romans, uh, in, in Ephesians 5.18. Don't not be drunk with wine, 
in which is expressed, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, my translation doesn't have a, a period there as a comma. I think most of your translations have a period. But mine reads like this. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You want to take a, a spiritual checklist here and see if you are walking in the Spirit, with who's dominating your life right now? Paul gives us a little pop quiz right here after he tells us to be filled with the Spirit. First thing that's going to be going on in our lives is we're going to be speaking to ourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Uh, is this you? You know, think about it. You go through your day. Are we joyful in our hearts? Is there a spiritual song that's going on in our hearts? Or are we completely preoccupied by all the craziness, election, COVID, yada, 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 and that's what's dictating, that's what has our thoughts, and that's what's got us all wrapped up? Good question, isn't it? This is just a one of this is the quick this is a pop quiz that Paul's given us to see if we really are. We can know if we're filled with the Spirit. Are we speaking to ourselves in psalms and, and singing, making melody in our hearts? Notice that and at the end of that verse, making melody, making melody in your heart to the Lord, there's no period there in my translation. There's a comma. Moves right on into verse uh, uh, ver uh, verse 20. The second thing that's going to be going on in our lives if we're filled with the Spirit is for giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ouch. Giving thanks always for all things. You know, I had a pretty good blow this year. Of, uh, my wife passed away last April with the, uh, with the brain tumor. And yeah, I, I miss Marie. I, I still miss her just uh, unbelievably. I still miss her. But you know, somewhere in these last April till today, what's that, nine months or so, six months? Somewhere in that time, the Lord has really been able to move me to be genuinely thankful for the passing of Marie. As I think back on that time, and I can now see clearly, I can remember how the Lord has, has just worked so gracious, was so gracious with Marie. He was so, he handled her so lovingly and graciously as he moved her into eternity. And I, and I, begin to be thankful for that. And then I think about, she, she's in heaven. Marie is in glory right now. She is with the Lord. She is, uh, I just cannot imagine what, what, the, what my buddy is up there, what she's experiencing. And, uh, I, and, and she's safe. That's the thing I think that really moved me is to, to, this, to this place where I'm at now where I can, I can genuinely thank, genuinely thank the Lord for taking Marie in April like she did because just for the fact that she's safe and she ran her race so so strong right straight through to the I am so proud of Marie the way that she ran her race right through the end and I can honestly be thankful in all things even those difficult things I can be thankful that he that he took Marie back in April because of the, the, the bottom line she's safe she ran her her pure race safely and I know I'll be with her before long here we all will just uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be right there with her loved ones. So, is there a, a there of giving thanks always for all things unto the Lord? The heat, okay. Uh, and again, no, there's no period there. There's another comma. Uh, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Is that you? Is that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit, quit saying you. Is that us? Uh, are we, do we submit to each other? Do we prefer others greater than ourselves? Do we always look, always look after others' needs more than our own needs? If we do, that's a sign that we, are, that we are filled with the Spirit. So, there we go, three things. Ask, am I filled with the Spirit? Well, are you speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns? Are you giving thanks always for all things? Are you submitting yourselves unto, the, unto others in the fear of God? Good questions. And this is not where it ends either, because this, if, if we are going to live the victorious Christian life, it goes in now, it moves into, and I'm not going to, I don't have time to do these, to, to talk about these things, but it's also going to influence our, 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 our families, our, our family relationships, because at first it just moves right in here, we're going to be submitting one, submitting one to another, wives, 
are going to be submitting to their own husbands. Husbands are going to love their wives the way Christ loved the church unconditionally, 120%. And those family relationships are going to work too if we are in submission to the Holy Spirit. Those church relationships are going to work if we're in submission to the Holy Spirit. That was a very quick flyover, a circle, as they say in, uh, in French. It's, uh, and I, that's, just, that's just the bones. That's the framework that I hope uh, uh, Josh has a chance to in the next few weeks here as he goes through Romans chapter 8. I hope he has the time to flesh all that out. There's so much in there. But it all boils down. If you take the victorious Christian life and you boil it all down to that very last kernel, that very last nut, is just simply walking in the Spirit, being yielded to the Holy Spirit, what he wants to accomplish through us, allowing him to live his life through us, and we will be victorious. And we will be more than conquerors through him that loved us. i got to quit. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much for your word. It's, it's alive. It's quick. It's powerful. And Father, it can be so rubber meets the road teaching as we uh, even in the day-to-day -day of life, uh, as we, we find ourselves on a spiritual roller coaster up and down, we can ask, Lord, what is going on here? Well, right there's the answers that we need to get off that spiritual roller coaster and to be uh, living victorious, to be more than conquerors, if we'll just let you live your life through us in the person of the Holy Spirit. We thank you. Father, we ask for blessing on our pastor and his family as they are. Uh, quarantining here for a, for a while. We missed them this morning, and we ask your blessing on them. We ask the blessing on our Sunday school time is coming up here in Jesus' name.